850 billion, six inland provinces in China dug canals. Why are infrastructure maniacs so keen on digging canals? High-speed rail has achieved the goal of running from morning to night, and most prefecture-level cities in China also have high-speed rail stations. However, even if the speed has increased, water transportation is still a more popular choice for the transportation of bulk goods. China has a well-developed water system and many large rivers, and there has been a tradition of digging canals since ancient times. In the 21st century, although the transportation methods of trains, cars and airplanes have become widely popular, there are still some people who firmly believe that canal transportation will usher in its development wave in the next few decades. At present, China has invested 850 billion and plans to dig five large canals in six large provinces. Once these canals are built, it will be like opening up China's lifeline, thereby promoting a huge leap in the economy. Let us take a closer look in this video. Located in Guangxi, the Pinglu Canal extends in a north-south direction, mainly through waterways to bring the Bibu Gulf estuary into Guangxi. Therefore, China's southwest region will have a more convenient channel for bulk cargo transportation and going to sea. Although Guangxi is located in the coastal area, compared with other coastal provinces in the country, Guangxi's coastal characteristics are not obvious due to its short coastline and relatively closed location. Previously, goods that rely on sea transportation usually did not go out to sea from the Bibu Gulf, but went to the Pearl River along the Xijiang Waterway and then loaded from Guangzhou or Shenzhen to the sea. Such a transportation route is far away, and the Pearl River waterway is easily disturbed by seasonal floods and other factors. The excavation of the Pinglu Canal aims to extend the Bibu Gulf area's estuary further to near Nanning through waterways. In this way, bulk cargo does not need to be transported along the Pearl River for a long distance nor does it have to go through roads and can go to sea directly through waterways at a shorter distance. The Pinglu Canal will start construction in 2022, which marks the beginning of China's canal transportation era from the perspective of experts in the field of transportation. After the Pinglu Canal is completed in the future, Qinzhou and Beihai in the Bibu Gulf region will significantly increase cargo throughput. The canal will not only promote cargo transportation in Guangxi, but also promote the outflow of goods from other provinces and cities in the southwest. In inland areas such as Yunnan and Guizhou, future foreign trade can use Guangxi as a transit point to quickly complete cargo loading at a shorter distance. According to previous plans, the construction time of the canal is expected to be 52 months, with the goal of being basically completed by the end of 2026. By then, the shipping channel will have the ability to accommodate large ships of 5,000 tons. The construction of the Pinglu Canal is accelerating, and another canal has begun to enter the planning stage. In 2020, China released a new inland waterway development plan, proposing to build four longitudinal and four transverse waterway networks in the future. Among the four longitudinal channels, one is a canal connecting Hubei, Hunan, and Guangxi, which is called the Hanxiang Guangxi Channel or the Hanxiang Guangxi Canal. The northern starting point of this planned route is located in the Han River, which will then connect with the Yangtze River, then lead to Dongting Lake, and finally connect with the Xiang River. Subsequently, the Gui River and the Xi River will be connected through the developed river channel, and finally connected to the Guangxi and Pinglu Canal. As a result, Goods departing from the upper reaches of the Han River can travel down this waterway and eventually be exported from the Bibu Gulf region. 
According to the plan, this new shipping route is 2,562 kilometers long. After completion in the future, it will become an important water transport channel from the central region to South China. According to the current plan, in order to achieve communication between various rivers and large lakes, the canal can be built based on existing waterways. Between different rivers, it is necessary to connect them by artificially digging new river channels. Among them, some plans will be implemented in stages. The section connecting the Pinglu Canal is called the Xiangue Canal section, which starts at Pingdao in Yongzhou and ends at Pingle in Gilin. The estimated length is about 300 kilometers. The area bordering Hunan and Guangxi has continuous high mountains, so when digging the canal in the future, the terrain must be considered and different watersheds must be set. According to previous estimates, these watersheds need to extend at least 34 kilometers. The latest news indicates that the transportation departments of Guangxi and Hunan have investigated the excavation of the Xiangue Canal and made comprehensive plans in terms of routes and cascade schemes. According to the arrangement, the research and demonstration of the canal is expected to be completed this year. If it is successfully completed, it will achieve full access to the middle and upper reaches of the Yangtze River and the middle and upper reaches of the Pearl River. The freight transportation between the central region and the Bibu Gulf region will be shortened by at least 1,200 kilometers, compared with the previous route. The Xiangue Canal, which is being planned, is only part of the future construction of the Hangxiangui Canal. According to the current situation, the excavation and planning of the canal will be gradually promoted in stages. The Pinglu Canal is the first project to start construction, while the Xiangue Canal is currently in the demonstration stage and will enter the construction stage. After this stage begins, we will start to connect Dongting Lake and make the Yangtze River and Han River interconnected. You mean this project is already quite large? This is just a longitudinal project in the future for vertical and for horizontal water transport network. In addition, there is a longer longitudinal waterway, which is currently in the planning and demonstration stage. For more than a thousand years, ancient Chinese people built and maintained the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal. This waterway connecting the south of the Yangtze River and the north has always been an important grain transportation channel in history, and it is also the longest canal ever built in ancient times. Have you ever thought that perhaps in ancient times, people also wanted to extend this canal to the southern part of China so that it could connect with the Pearl River system? The ancients could only imagine it, but lacked the corresponding technical means. The areas that need to be crossed to connect the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River system with the Pearl River system are mostly mountainous areas, while the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal mainly passes through flat areas. In this case, the ancient people lacked advanced technology and huge financial and human resources to dig a longer canal channel. However, today, with new technologies, we can achieve what the ancients could not do. This is the Zhujiang Jiangxi Guangdong Canal that is being planned. As the name suggests, this canal will connect the three provinces of Zhujiang, Jiangxi, and Guangdong and this area happens to be located between the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River and the Pearl River system. According to the plan, this canal can be divided into two parts, north and south, with the Jiangxi Guangdong Canal in the south and the Zhujiang Jiangxi Canal in the north. The total planned length of the Zhujiang Jiangxi Canal is about 760 kilometers, of which 410 kilometers are located in Jiangxi province and the remaining more than 200 kilometers 
are in Zhejiang province. The main connection is the Xinjiang River and the Qiantang River, which are connected by a series of artificial canals. The estimated funds required are about 170 billion yuan. The southern section of the Jiangxi Guangdong Canal connects Jiangxi and Guangdong. The overall length is about 1,228 kilometers, of which the section in Jiangxi province is as long as 758 kilometers. The estimated funds required for construction are about 150 billion yuan. According to the plan, the construction volume of the southern section is even larger, that is, the Jiangxi Guangdong Canal section. Poyang Lake is connected to the Ganjiang River and Taojiang River, and will then be connected to the Beijiang River through an artificial canal, so that the water system of Jiangxi can be integrated into the Pearl River Basin. After the overall smooth flow, the rivers in the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River will form a network with the Pearl River system. At that time, goods departing from Guangdong can easily reach Beijing through the canal, and many areas along the way will prosper due to logistics and transportation. According to last year's plan, the construction of the southern section of the Jiangxi Guangdong Canal has now been incorporated into the National Transportation Network Plan. Many preliminary projects have already started, and it is expected that the Jiangxi Guangdong Canal will be basically completed around 2030. From a planning perspective, the construction of the Zhujiang Guangzhou Guangdong Canal is similar to the Han Xiang Guangxi Canal, both of which are being promoted in stages. The above content is about several longitudinal canal waterways that are being planned and constructed. These canals run from east to west and from north to south, connecting the Yangtze River and the Pearl River Basin. In addition, some canals have been built and put into use. Last September, the Jianghuai Canal was officially open to navigation, which marked that part of the planned water network transportation system has been put into use. The canal mainly connects the two important water systems of the Yangtze River and the Huaiha River, allowing cities along the Yangtze River in Anhui to go directly upstream into the Huaiha River Basin. The waterway in the Huaiha River Basin has been extended to Hunan, and the goods in Shangqiu and Zhoukou can be directly loaded and shipped downstream into the Yangtze River. This method significantly reduces the cost compared with the previous land transportation. In addition to transportation, the Jianghuai Canal also undertakes the function of regulating water resources. Compared with the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River, the water resources in Huaibei and eastern Hunan are more scarce. This canal introduces water from the Yangtze River to the north, which has significantly improved the drinking water in many arid areas. In addition to the opening of the Jianghuai Canal last year, the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal has also accelerated its upgrading and transformation in recent years. At present, the canal section from Shandong to the south has been transformed and is navigable. As for the canal north of Shandong, mainly in Hebei, it is still undergoing continuous transformation and will be fully navigable in the future. The canal era is clearly developing steadily. The reason why water transportation has received so much attention is mainly due to the huge advantages it possesses. Train and automobile transport are important modes of transportation in modern society, but their costs are relatively high compared to water transport. Data shows that water transport consumes the least energy, followed by rail transport, while road transport consumes the most energy. In terms of transportation costs, water transport is also the cheapest, while rail costs are twice as much, and road transport costs are ten times as much as water transport. 
According to the current transportation structure analysis, road transport occupies a dominant position in terms of transportation scale, with its freight volume reaching about 70%. This directly leads to an increase in overall logistics costs. However, we should also understand that the reason why road transport has developed so much is that railways cannot cover all areas, and waterways cannot reach every corner. Only roads can extend to every village. In other words, road transport can not only be responsible for the transportation of bulk goods, but also for the distribution of goods to each household, which is why it has a large transportation volume. However, another set of data shows that the cargo turnover of water transport should not be underestimated. For example, according to data from 2022, the cargo turnover of inland water transport is more than half that of rail transport. If artificial canals are not dug, water transport can only be carried out in the direction of natural rivers. Most rivers in China are east-west, and there are almost no large natural rivers in the north-south direction. Therefore, the current active promotion of the construction of the canal transportation network is to open up the connection between major water systems vertically. In the future, with the development of a more dense water transport network, more efficient and convenient cargo transportation can be achieved. China's inland river freight volume has always ranked first in the world for many years. By 2020, the total navigable length of China's inland waterways will exceed 120,000 kilometers, which is also among the best in the world. From the perspective of transportation volume, the Yangtze River mainstream is still the busiest waterway. The goal of building a canal transportation system in the future is to connect the two major rivers in the north and south, to increase the density of the canal water network, thereby further enhancing the cargo transportation capacity. Obviously, no project can be completed overnight. In the next 20 to 30 years, short and medium-term planning projects will be implemented one after another. If it involves medium and long-term projects, it will take longer to promote and implement. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.